So, you want to get rid of reading glasses forever? That's the topic of today's video. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Audrey Tai. Welcome back to my channel, I channel by Eye Surgeon. I'm a board certified and a fellowship trained refractive and cataract surgeon, ophthalmologist, and cornea specialist. I'm here to bring you the latest information on eye health and medicine. The worsening of reading vision as we age is called presbyopia. With the recent FDA approval of the Viewity Eye Drop, which is a temporary treatment for presbyopia, a lot of my patients have been asking me about ways to eliminate reading glasses permanently. If you're interested in learning more about the Viewity Eye Drop, you can check out this video. In today's video, I will discuss a surgical option that can treat presbyopia permanently. This type of presbyopia eye surgery is known as refractive lens exchange surgery or RLE. I will go over how RLE works, who are candidates for RLE surgery, what to expect before and on the day of RLE surgery, the recovery process, and what are the risks of this type of surgery. Make sure you watch the entire video to learn about both the benefits and risks of RLE surgery. Okay, so how does RLE surgery work? RLE surgery corrects presbyopia by replacing the stiff and aging natural lens in our eyes with an advanced intraocular lens implant or IOL. When we're young, we're able to see objects at different distances due to the flexibility of our natural lens. Our natural lens becomes more curved when the eye muscles contract, called ciliary body muscles. And our eyes become more nearsighted. And this enables us to see objects that are close to us clearly. In our early 40s, our lenses gradually lose their flexibility and no longer change shape as our eye muscles contract, causing presbyopia. Although there's no currently available treatment to restore the elasticity of our natural lens. Refractive lens exchange surgery treats presbyopia by removing the rigid lens and replacing it with an advanced IOL. To give us a clearer range of vision, including distance, intermediate, and near vision. So how do you know if you're a good candidate for RLE surgery? In general, people who are over the age of 40 and have developed significant presbyopia or difficulty reading may want to be evaluated by an eye surgeon for RLE surgery. In order to be a candidate for RLE surgery, you need to have a healthy eye, free of significant eye diseases. For example, people who have glaucoma, macro degeneration, significant diabetic eye disease, a history of retinal detachment, eye inflammation, or any significant disease of the cornea are not good candidates for RLE surgery. People who are extremely nearsighted or farsighted with abnormal length of the eye are also typically not good candidates for RLE surgery. For example, in people who are extremely nearsighted with a glasses prescription over minus 15 diopters, the length of the eyeball is extremely long and this increases the risk of developing retinal detachment with any kind of intraocular surgery, including RLE surgery. So what can you expect during your evaluation for RLE? In order to determine if you're a candidate for RLE surgery, you'll need to have a full eye exam by your eye surgeon, a complete extensive testing and measurements of your eyes. Typically, a full RLE surgery evaluation will involve measuring the curvature and length of the eye, a full eye exam with pupil dilation, examining the health of the optic nerve and retina inside of the eye. Also, the strength of the glasses prescription for both distance and near vision is recorded during the exam. After the examination and testing, if you're a candidate for RLE surgery, your eye surgeon and you will pick the best advanced intraocular lens implant for your eye. There are two main types of advanced IOLs that are currently available in the US for presbyopia correction. Multifocal IOLs and extended depth of focus or EDOF IOLs. 
The choice of IOL for each candidate is made based on that individual's functional vision needs, as well as any vision requirements for their profession and lifestyle. If you would like me to make a more in-depth video about the differences between different types of IOLs, let me know in the comments below. And if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. What should you expect on the day of RLA surgery? And how do you care for your eyes after surgery? RLA surgery is typically done for both eyes either separately or occasionally at the same time. It is an outpatient procedure that takes about 15 minutes for each eye, and it will go home the same day. During the surgery, patients are typically not under general anesthesia. They will receive IV or local sedatives to stay conscious, but in a very relaxed state. The surgery itself is painless, and patients will be using different types of eye drops with a tapered schedule in the weeks following surgery. Strenuous activities should be avoided during the first week after surgery. In general, your vision will be blurry on the day of surgery. With a successful RLE surgery, your vision should be much clearer the day after surgery. And you should be able to resume most of your vision tasks the day after surgery, such as watching TV or light reading. You may feel very mild irritation or foreign body sensation in your eyes and it may have some light sensitivity for about a week after surgery. The majority of vision recovery occurs during the first week after surgery, but it is not unusual for you to experience small fluctuations in your vision during the first month after surgery. Although mild irritation and vision fluctuation are expected shortly after surgery, significant eye pain and sudden significant vision change are unusual and can be signs of a potential serious complications. If you experience those or any other concerning symptoms, you should contact your eye surgeon right away. For most RLE patients, their vision stabilizes after about one month after surgery. However, a small percentage of patients may take a few months to fully recover their vision after RLE surgery. Usually, Patients will be following up with their eye surgeon or eye doctor a few times during the postoperative period. The surgical steps of RLE surgery are basically the same as cataract surgery, and it can be done with a conventional manual method or with assistance from a femtosecond laser. To learn more about the steps of RLE and cataract surgery and the differences between manual RLE surgery versus femtosecond laser assisted RLE surgery, you can check out this video. Conventional cataract surgery versus laser assisted cataract surgery. What are the differences? If you have stayed with me this far, I hope you have found this video helpful. And if so, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. It would really help me to bring you more videos about eye health and eye surgery. Now remember, there are risks with any surgery, including RLE surgery. With RLE surgery, there is a small chance of infection, bleeding, increased eye pressure, glares at night, and potentially other risks that you should discuss with your eye surgeon. Most of the complications from RLE surgery are treatable with additional medications or procedures. Although it is rare, the risk of vision loss is not zero with RLE surgery or any intraocular surgery. The goal of RLE surgery is to reduce the need for reading glasses and to help you eliminate reading glasses for most of your vision needs. Most RLE patients do not need reading glasses after surgery. However, people who spend a lot of time doing prolonged close-up work, for example, threading needles or reading very small print up close for hours at a time, they still want to wear reading glasses for those tasks in order to reduce eye strain. Therefore, it is important for you to have an individualized exam and a consultation with your eye surgeon to determine if RLE surgery is the right treatment for you. Let me know in the comments below if you need reading glasses now, and if so, have you heard about RLE surgery as a treatment option for presbyopia? 
and would you consider it? I hope you find this video helpful. If you have learned anything new, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Because if you click that subscribe button, you will help give me the opportunity to continue to bring free videos about eye health and eye surgery to the world. Anytime you don't have 10 minutes to watch videos, you can watch short, fun videos about eye care tips on Instagram at Dr. Audrey Tai. You can also follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn to learn more about my practice. I look forward to connecting with you there. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you in my next video.